Mom Training Podcast with Diana Ballard. Hey ladies, I'm coming at you from vacation actually. We're here visiting family. I've been having a really good time the last couple weeks. So while we've been on vacation, I have been able to meet with one of my expert moms named Beverly. Call her Bev. So you'll hear me talk about her a lot in my podcast because ever since I've met her, she's changed my life. (laughs) I just met her at a wedding one time and was like, can you teach me? Because I could tell just from meeting her that she was someone that I wanted to follow and be like. And that's just who she is. And I mean, you've met people like that before. Where you're like, wow, I don't know what it is about you, but the way that you do things, the way that you talk, the way that you live your life, like you're so full of joy. I want to know what you're doing. I want to learn what you know and how you practice life because you're just amazing. (laughs) Now you may not say that right out, but you know what I mean. So anyway, I met with Bev this weekend and she has taught me so much. So I'm going to share a little bit about some things that I learned from her. Now, every time I go and talk with her, the relationship that we have set up is like a mentor. She's become a mentor to me as, um, you know, being a wife and a housewife and, you know, a businesswoman as well. And she's been all of those very successfully Uh, She's 70 years old, has five kids, tons of grandkids, the most beautiful home, just, and she's always happy, just always grinning from ear to ear. (laughs) And uh, so anyway, so I always come with a list of questions and ideas to share with her every time that I meet with her. So one of the things I brought to talk to her about was how to balance my daily responsibilities and how to not get stressed out about it. You know, especially like with being a mom, it's really easy for things to kind of get in your way. If like the best way to describe it, like, you know, someone needs you for something, someone knocks a whole bowl of cereal that goes all over like your table and all over every part of your floor and your counter. I mean, things can get in your way with being a mom. And one, we want to try to not see it that way of like, okay, this is being a mom is my job. Like this is what I'm, you know what I'm doing full time and I want to love it, you know, so we want to try to not see it as in our way. But when it comes down to it, you want to call it what it is. (laughs) There are things that are going to like stop you from achieving everything that you have planned for that day. And that's normal. And that's something that all of us moms have to deal with. And anyone in the world has to deal with actually, because, you know, life is unpredictable. We never know. So she started to share this idea with me before, and I had done it for a short time and had forgotten about it, which it shows you that when you're learning things and want to change your habits, you need to practice them over and over again to truly learn and change the way you do things. So if you're struggling in some areas, go back and listen to these podcasts over and over and over again to remind yourself and practice these skills that we talk about here. I have listened to some recordings probably over a hundred times to train myself because I lacked so much skill in that area. Don't be afraid to go back and learn things over and over again. Have it become a piece of you and something that becomes a habit instead of just something that you practice on a daily basis because a habit can be something we practice, but we want it to become solid. We want it to become a piece of who we are. But this is something Beverly practices daily and has for many, many years. And she's one of the most productive, happy people I've ever ever met like she's amazing (laughs) she's so freaking cool um so this is what she recommends about how to kind of balance out my daily responsibilities and how to not get stressed out so she said that that I should make a list of what I'm going to do for that day or the next day like for me it's better for me to make my lists in the evening or at least you know start to think about like what's happening the next day because then I can kind of balance out, okay, what, when am I going to do this thing? What's my, what's my time frame? What's most important? So I, I'm trying to kind of logically figure out 
what I need to be focusing on tomorrow just to get it like off my chest and off my brain so that I can go to sleep. Um, she likes to do hers in the morning and I've tried that myself, but it's really hard when you have, you know, little kids, like my kids are little. And so once they get up and the day starts going, oh man, like sitting down and having that time to organize my thoughts doesn't happen as often. So I like to do mine at night. Uh, you can kind of figure out what you want to do. If you want to create your list of what you're going to do for that day, either the night before or the day of, but then that morning, as you sit there and you look at your list, now, depending on what type of person you are, you could be like super ambitious and have like 20 things on the list, <laughs> or maybe you have like five, you know, maybe the normal things like aren't counting, like get out of bed, you know, <laughs> if you, if you're one of those people too, that like to write down like everything, like I'm going to get dressed tomorrow. I'm going to put makeup on tomorrow. And sweet. Have 50 things on your list that are, you know, things you have to check off, but let's keep it kind of simple. Let's kind of pull it back a little bit to when you make your list, like what tasks do I need to get done tomorrow? And then while you're looking at that list of the things you want to do today, you pray and you ask the angels, God, whatever you believe in. But for me, it's God. You ask God and say, what is most important for me to do today? And what order should I do them? And then you use your logic to, and your you know skill set, and you just start thinking about how you're going to organize the tasks on your list to make sure that they are done first. Now it could be I'm going to knock out the hardest one first. I'm going to make sure I spend time with my kids first, or send a message to my husband, or do something for him, or maybe I need to take a minute and get myself ready for the day. You know, being able to think logically about okay, what is most important for me to get done first? What's going to bring me the most peace? What's going to bring me the most joy? And what's going to be the priority that I cover that's going to bring me the most fulfillment and be what I need to be for my family? And then once you kind of get that inspiration of like, hmm, I feel like I should make, you know, dinner at 10 a.m. this morning, then girl, you do that. And, you know, a lot of times when I've had stuff like that happen where I have done what she has recommended, and, you know, it's like, hmm, I, I need to make dinner, so, and, but I feel like I should make it earlier. There's always a good reason. <laughs> I get to the end of the day and, you know, something crazy has happened. Someone's called me. I've had to go do something for somebody. You know, something's ran longer. It's amazing how when we listen to our inspiration of how to run our day individually, how much we can get done how much time is saved, how much energy is saved. And we get to the end of the day and we can feel a lot more fulfilled if we choose to find and follow inspiration in our daily life on a daily basis. So this isn't just like, you know, the once a week or maybe a couple times a week when you get time to like write or like sit down and meditate and think about things. Like what if we took every single day and we took just a couple minutes at the beginning of our day to look at our list Think about it, ask for inspiration, and, you know, make those things happen according to the order that we feel. And then her other last tip with this is what we don't get done, don't stress about it. You just put it on the top of your list tomorrow. So we have to kind of trust, and this is what she teaches, is that we have to trust that the things we got done today if we diligently worked on things, if we diligently tried to follow the inspiration that came of what order to do things, how to logically do things, then we have to get to the end of the day and not stress about what we didn't do and just put it on the list for tomorrow. Now, I will say that if you keep putting off the same things over and over again, <laughs> You just need to face it. It usually is something that's like your least favorite, out of your comfort zone, having to confront an issue or a task that seems bigger than you feel like handling. But the sooner you get that task done, the more freedom you will feel and the peace and the relief is totally yours. If you start to practice these things, get the hard tasks done and feel better about it. So I invite you to make a list either for today or for tomorrow, just start making a list of what tasks and responsibilities you feel like you need to get done that day. Be, be, be wise about it. 
This doesn't mean you add 5 million things to your list. What is most important for you to get done today? What is most important for you to get done tomorrow? Then you look at the list in the morning. You, you know, use your inspiration. You pray, please guide me. What is the most important thing? What order should I do these in today? And please help it flow. Use your logic. You think about it. You organize it. You go at it. And then when you're done at the end of the day, you look back and say, hmm, I didn't do these things. I'm not going to stress about it. I did the things that I felt were most important and I felt directed to do. So I'm not going to stress about it. I'm going to put it on my list for tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm going to drill it again. This, my friend, will not only give you peace and help you prevent stress, but it'll also help you be more productive with your time and your energy, which we need to have. (laughs) We always need more of, right? So the next couple weeks, I will be focusing on some things that I talked about with my friend Bev, Beverly. And some of the things that she taught me that I am, I am currently working on that was, you know, mind-blowing for me, has changed my life, <laughs> uh, and that I will continue to start practicing. So tune in the next couple weeks, and we'll talk about what this expert mom does that, I mean, this lady would blow your mind if you met her. I mean, she is spectacular. Uh, so tune in. We'll talk about some things that I've learned from her. Uh, this last weekend and how I'm applying it and how we can apply it together. And I just want to say here that if, um, put in a little plug here, that if you are wanting to join a group of moms that are trying to enjoy motherhood more, uh, you know, trying to get healthy and lose weight, we've officially started a Dancing Through Motherhood group on Facebook where we're sharing recipes and dancing and like supporting each other as we're trying to ha- be healthier, have a better, you know, healthier mindset about our body and dance together as we lose weight and feel healthy and uh, support each other. So if you want to join Dancing Through Motherhood, just type in Dancing Through Motherhood should come up and uh, we'd love to have you there. So tune in for that and tune in for the next couple of weeks as we talk about Bev and what she's taught me and how I'm practicing it and how you can practice it too. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, If you could tell another mom about the mom training podcast to help it grow and help some other families become better too, that would be awesome. And you guys are great. And we'll see you next week on the mom training podcast. Thanks. Bye. Hit subscribe so you don't miss anything. You can hit me up on social media at Diana Ballard Live or on my website at dianaballard.com. See you next week.